It's Monday evening, September 23rd, and we are back with another edition of the Flow Track College Cross Country Ranking Show presented by Hoka. I'm Ryan Fenton alongside Ashley Titians, and it's, it's finally happening. Cross Country is here. I mean, it's been here, but it's really here this week, Ashley. <laughs> I mean, I'm just excited, right? I think we both know that all the big action is coming this weekend. It's been pretty quiet up until now, but now is when things are really going to go full throttle. Yeah, we don't want it too quiet, so we want to introduce our, our guest analyst, Mr. Matt Baxter, who's out in Flagstaff. Matt, what's going on out there? Oh, man, Flagstaff is coming into the nicest time of year. It's cold in the mornings, but still warm in the afternoon. We have NAZ rolling at the moment. Everyone's getting ready for some, well, a lot of us are getting ready for some full marathons. Keep bumping into NAU at the track. They're excited about what's to come, so everything's good on my end. Are they, uh, are they approving of your, your analysis so far? Are they giving you any feedback that we need to, to be aware of? You know, I, I think so. But, but like I had said on, on the last show, I think as an athlete, the biggest thing is you try to kind of keep rankings out of your mind a little bit. So even if those are the, the ones who are tuning in and who are excited about the rankings, I think they just listen to it and then try not to think about it again afterwards. Well, this week we do not have a release of the rankings. That'll come next week after this big weekend that's highlighted by the Nutty Cone Wisconsin Invitational, the uh, OK State Cowboy Jamboree. Uh, but we will get into some of the results that we saw this weekend. We'll, we'll look ahead, Ashley, to this big weekend that includes Nutty Cone and the Jamboree. Uh, we'll also have a special guest on today, uh, the director of track and field and cross country at the University of Wisconsin, Mick Byrne, to talk about this big weekend, really a big season up in Madison where they'll host Nutty Cone, Pre-Nats, and NCAAs all this year. Uh, so a lot to look forward to. Uh, but before we dive into the guest and what's to come this weekend, actually this last weekend, we did see a few ranked teams come out, have some home competitions, and, and travel a little bit. What did, what did you notice out there? Yeah, I think if you're looking at what happened over the weekend, we had two big important meets. We had the Roy Griak Invitational and then the Adidas Cross Country Challenge. Now, we didn't see all the top teams in the world go compete at these meets, but we did see some two, I think, notable results from those, beginning with Rory Griak. I think if you're looking at the results, the Minnesota women take home the win on their home course, but they beat the Utah Valley women, who are ranked number 15 in our rankings coming into this. So that's a pretty big upset because we did not have Minnesota ranked coming into that weekend. So that's a pretty big upset on that side. And then I think the Adidas Cross Country Challenge hosted by NC State on their home course was an interesting one, especially on the women's side. You have NC State debuting most of their full squad, getting the win, but I'm really impressed by the Clemson women. They went one, two, three at that meet to take those few top spots, and they're led by Judy Koskai, a transfer from South Carolina, and she's looking really strong already this season. As a Clemson alum, obviously took note of those, uh, those, the, those Clemson women out there at, at the Adidas XE Invitational. One, two, three. They got a little bit of work to do after number three. Just a little. Pretty big gap between four and five. But NC State, it was great to see them out there. Uh, it looked like about a 35-second gap between one and five. But it, only a 5K right now. So, it's, again, still early season. But good to see where they're at. Uh, and I imagine in a few weeks, come pre-nationals weekend, we'll see them mixing it up with some, some bigger names out there. Um, but pre-nats weekend... Hosted at Wisconsin. Before that, rewind two weeks, we're here at Nuttycomb, also right. at Wisconsin. And as we said, uh, our special guest today will be Mick Byrne uh, from the University of Wisconsin, getting ready to lead his Badger squads uh, out there at the uh, Nuttycomb Invitational. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's have Mick hop on and join us and talk a little XC. Mick Byrne, welcome to the show. It's a big week of cross country. Nutty Comb weekend, always an exciting one. Um, first off, just how are you doing? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on. Um, as you say, it's a big week. Uh, excited for uh, Friday's meet. Uh, it's been, I think, over 15 years now since you guys have hosted the, the Nutty Comb Wisconsin Invitational, and it's become really the premier destination and event in, during the season of, of Division I cross country. So just curious, was that the goal when you guys started? And, and what's it been like to see that meet grow and be such a spotlight on the cross country season? Yeah, to be honest with you, um, I don't think that was the vision uh, back in 2009 when we started the meet. Um, we wanted to put on a, a first class uh, competition 
uh, with anywhere from six to ten teams, you know, good quality teams. And it's just it's just grown into this monstrosity. I, I think it was a result of um, pre nats um, how that was run, uh, you know, before we came out with the Nutty Comb Me. I think, you know, having two A races, two evenly seated races, um, I don't think that's that well with a lot of coaches. I, I, I think it's very difficult to do that. There is a, a, um, a protocol set up, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it works. And so I think coaches were hungry for the idea of having uh, one big race. And, uh, you know, we were happy to accommodate the coaches' wishes. And uh, now it's become this, uh, you know, crazy meat on steroids. <laughs> I would say, too, that this, you know, with you guys hosting NCAAs as well, this is an even bigger Nutty Comb year, right? Because you're going to have Nutty Comb and then Pre-Nats and then Nationals. So three opportunities to race on this course, potentially. So how does this add almost to the allure of this meet, especially in 2024? Yeah, I, I, you know, it was, uh, we, we contemplated this year um, whether we were going to, um, you know, just, take a take a break from Nutty Comb and, and it was more about thinking about our team which is pretty young and do we want to you know put them in a situation where you know at the end of September we're running Nutty Comb and and I think it's not just our team but I think all teams Matt Baxter you know referenced it before um, you know, kids and teams get up for, um, you know, for the Nutty Comb invitation because it is such a big deal. Um, you know, moving it into September kind of changes the dynamic a little bit, um, you know, but the coaches are still uh, asking the same questions. I've, you know, I've gotten from the most bizarre questions from coaches, what direction does the wind blow out of on, uh, on September 29th? You know, uh, what's the predictable rain uh, fall and is there going to be snow and all, all those weird questions. But, you know, they can look it up just like I can on the on the Weather Channel. But, you know, coaches make such a huge big deal about it. And, and of course, if a coach is doing that, then the athletes are going to um, kind of feel that same uh, energy, that same uh, pressure in some cases. But... Uh, you know, we looked at it this year. It was like, is this really what we want for our kids? But uh, knowing what's coming, um, once we get into the middle of October and hosting the pre-nats, which is loaded, uh, then going to the conference meet, which is a completely different beast this year with the West Coast schools, and uh, you know, then having a run in case at regionals and nationals. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a different year. Um, it makes planning a little bit uh, ch more challenging, but, uh, you know, nothing that none of us coaches aren't used to. Now, I know you mentioned the weather. I already looked at the weather forecast because I'm going to be there this weekend on Friday, and it looks like no, no snow, obviously, in the forecast. <laughs> it's going to be cloudy and in the 70s. But, you know, when you, when you look at this, right, like some pretty good conditions this weekend, like what are you looking forward to most seeing from these teams on Friday? I mean, it's no secret why teams are coming here. It's it's head-to-head -head competition. Uh, 18 of the top 30 teams are going to go to the line. Um, three of the top 10. We've got eight teams front ranked from 10 to 20th in the current poll, and seven teams from 21 to 30. I, I think when you look at the middle of the of the group, um, you know, from 10 all the way up to 30 with uh, 16 teams, um, there's a lot of points on the table, and I think that's that's why this meet has become what it what, what it is today. Um, uh, but there's no secret; everybody's chasing points. The weather looks great. Uh, the course is in tremendous uh, condition. Uh, we've done some renovations out there, uh, some additional uh, fencing. Place looks great. Um, it'll be fast, that's for sure. Make them but the 10k and. The 10K and the 5K courses are two completely different beasts, for sure. I, I, just listening to some of the things you're, you're talking about, the chase for points, the coaches with very interesting questions, uh, the fact that you guys are hosting. When you think about 
you know, nutty comb, but also the fact that you guys are hosting these big events three times throughout this year. I'm actually just curious your perspective on who feels more pressure, the teams that are coming to this and are really chasing these points, and this is kind of their one shot to get that inner kind of outer region competition going, or, or do you guys feel that being the host, not only are you putting on, you're kind of showcasing your program in front of the school, obviously a ton of tradition there at Wisconsin. How, how, do, you, how do you kind of sift through those dynamics? Well, I, I, I think I look at it like this. If, if I'm getting all crazy about a meet in September, um, I've always said that September is all about training, and I'm not going to change that. Uh, our lineup uh, and will be different. And uh, Big Ten. Um, so if I'm getting all crazy right now, at the end of September, then my kids are going to. So um, I don't feel any pressure. Um, not getting real up. Not getting real high about it. Not getting low about it. Just even keel and uh gonna just uh, not change anything from what we've done in the past um you know we haven't raced a lot in september in, in the last five or six years um i'd like to think it's 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 worked it's worked to to some degree for sure um but uh yeah i think uh the kids obviously it's the nutty comb and we know what that means here the history of the meet i mean when you think over the last 10 years who's actually competed here what teams have competed it's like a who's who in collegiate uh, cross country for sure um if that doesn't get you excited as an athlete but you know our job as coaches is to curtail that as much as we can at this time of year i think nutty comb in september is a little bit different than uh, nutty comb in the middle of october for sure now, just looking at the Badgers this year as a whole, right, what are you expecting and what are some of your goals for both the men and the women? You know, the, the women finished 22nd last year at NCAAs, the men finished 10th. So how are you hoping to see both these programs, you know, as we're starting to get into September, October, and November, continue to improve upon what they did last year? Yeah, I mean, the goal is always to, you know, we talk about Big Tens and beyond. Um, you know, for our men, obviously, uh, going in at the end of uh, October, I think it's the first of November this year, um, Big Tens is, is always huge. Um, with the addition of the four schools, four West Coast schools, it's going to look different, of course, with Oregon, for sure, and Washington. But um, we always look at that as that's the starting point of the season. Um, quite frankly, I mean, it's no secret. I, you know, we were disappointed last year at... Uh, after NC2As, our result in, in Virginia, a um, couple, couple of guys got COVID uh, just before the Big Tens, and that really took the steam out of, out of the team and, and, and knocked us down hard, and uh, we didn't recover from it. So, but, you know, everybody has had something going on going into these big meets, and it's a time of year where, you know, you have to be ready. We weren't. And we were disappointed, and, and our goal is always to be better than the previous year. So we think we're a better team for sure. Um, we got some good young guys that I'm very excited about, um, and it's just you know getting them prepped and ready to go when it really matters, and that's late October and into November. So um, excited about you know both teams. Uh, certainly, the women are, are a much better team. Um, then last year, I'm 100% I'm sure of that. So excited to see what uh, they can do, uh, you know, when it really matters in uh, November. Mick, uh, just a couple questions on the roster on the men's side. I mean, I think looking at last year's championships, you kind of lose the bookends, right? Number one and number seven. Uh, looks like everything, everyone else is back on the roster. Uh, Adam Spencer had a long season, track season going to Paris. Um, you know, what, what should we expect from, from them on the men's side specifically this weekend? Do we see a full squad? Are we, are we seeing a partial squad? Uh, well, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, uh, I would say you're probably not going to see a, a full squad. Um, you know, again, you can't, you can't talk out 
both sides of your mouth. So, um, you know, you can't say that you're training in September, uh, getting ready for two hard 10Ks in November, and not follow through on that. Um, again, it's for me, September is all about training. We're going to stick to that plan. And the team that we see out there on Friday will not be the same team that you'll see when it really matters. And that's, uh, you know, from pre-nationals on. I mean, just like everybody else, we'll jump on the points bandwagon for pre-nats for sure. Um, it, it just because I think it's important to do that and have a, a safety net. Um, I'm not going to take any chances. Uh, just going into regionals where our region is pretty stacked. We got... Uh, Notre Dame and Butler and a couple of other teams, um, but certainly Notre Dame and Butler. And uh, yeah, I, I would like to have some points in the bag before we uh, head into conference. And, and so to answer your question, yes, the team that we see on Friday will not be the exact same team that you'll see later on in the year. And I, yeah, I, I would say the same for the women, although the women will have a, um, a better theme than, uh, than the men uh, this this Friday for sure. Well, I know we're all looking forward to Nutty Comb this weekend, but obviously we already alluded to this a little bit earlier, but you guys will be hosting NCAAs again this year, the first time since 2018. What excites you about, you know, being able to host such this, you know, big meet again, and then what kind of work goes into, you know, just hosting a meet like this, you know, the NCAA championships? Yeah, I, I mean, two questions, what goes into it? I mean, obviously a lot of work, a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears from a lot of people. Our, we have a fantastic event management staff. Um, McBurn doesn't do a lot of it. Uh, our assistant coaches don't do an awful lot of the work. Um, have to go to a couple of meetings and that's about it. And just point people in the right direction. But our event management basically uh, runs the entire meet. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty good at it, uh, hosting these, uh, you know, national caliber meets, you know, for quite a while now. Certainly a meet like the Prunats and uh, in, in Nuddycombe, uh, you know, it's like a dress rehearsal for, for the big stage and big show. But, uh, um, yeah, we don't, we don't have to do an awful lot of the work in, in, in terms of coaching staff. Um, what excites me about it, uh, you know, we were talking earlier to... Uh, Matt Baxter, in, in, and he talked about, um, you know, Wisconsin being one of his favorite courses, and certainly the course, um, it, it will look, there's no doubt about it, it will look completely different, feel different in November than it will mid-October, and, and uh, you know, this Friday is going to look completely different than the factor, that's mother nature. Come, it was you know we got a lot of rain going into the meet and that was mid-October. We did a lot of damage, but our event management crew you know brought it back. We hosted the Big Ten Championship, so they did a great job of bringing it back and getting it ready for uh, Big Ten Championships. And and uh, you know we're prepared for whatever Mother Nature throws at us. But um, yeah, I think the other great part about the meet is I think Mike Matt said it earlier. Um, you know, our fan base, uh, it was crazy in 18. Uh, obviously, having Morgan McDonald and having him, uh, you know, fight for that individual title uh, excited the crowd. Um, but, you know, also Alicia Monson on the women's side, you know, having a shot at the individual uh, title was, was huge for us. Um, and then having both teams, men and women's. But our crowd, it was crazy. Um, I, the number of, uh, it's hard to put a, uh, you know, the number on how many spectators actually showed up to the meet, but, um, you know, they're talking in excess of 10,000 and, you know, diehard cross-country fans, knowledgeable uh, cross-country fans that were passionate about not just the Badgers, but seeing this great spectacle of, you know, 31 best men and women's teams in the country compete for national championships. That was just awesome. And, you know, all credit to you guys. You guys were, you know, doing the uh, the live broadcast at, at that time. And, you know, your your recap show did just capture the essence of everything that happened that day from the snow, the spectators, the noise, um, the flags. Uh, it was it was a fantastic experience. <laughs> but I think, I think because we put on a great show. Um, that's why the NC2A asked us to host it again. 
I, I can vouch for that. I was, I was there. I was out in the snow uh, for a number of hours that day. It was an unbelievable show. I remember two Wisconsin teams finishing in the top 10, the individual champ there with Morgan. So uh, it, was, it was really a, a day to remember, especially for you guys. So we, uh, we're excited for this year, hosting again. Hopefully that means another uh, double top 10 finish for the Wisco programs. Uh, but first, we, we got Nutty Comb this weekend, pre-Nats in a couple weeks. And with all that, Mick, we know your schedule is super busy, so we appreciate you joining us today and, and talking about the season and uh, excited to see really things kick off this weekend. First, for, we, we call it the Nutty Weekend here, so uh, we're really looking forward to it. And, and thanks again for joining us. Always great to have Mick on the show and talk to him, get his insight about the cross-country season. Very knowledgeable guy. But Ashley, you're, uh, you're actually going out there this weekend. Yes. So after talking to Mick, is the excitement even even higher now? Or what, what, what are you feeling heading into to Madison? I mean, I think I was already pretty excited because I've actually never been to Wisconsin, never been to Madison, none of that at all. So now being able to hear a little bit more about just you know the prestige of the meet, right? Like we know that this is one of the biggest meets of the season every year. And I think for me being able to go this this first time here ever for me, like I think it's going to be really exciting, especially when you consider, hey, teams could potentially see this course, Nutty Cone, Pre-Nats, and Nationals. So I think it's a big year for, for the Badgers. Matt, what about you? I, I, you were listening in. Uh, Mick gave a, a shout-out to, to Matt Baxter there. Uh, what did you hear from him? Yeah, that was a, it was a really interesting interview, and he actually brought up something that I'd never thought about before. Being on the NAU team, we always only had one home meet at the start of the season, and it was a great, great time to perform in front of a home crowd, but then after that, we're on the road. We're always competing somewhere else. But as Mick was pointing out, I mean, they have three home meets, basically, between Nutty Comb, Pre-Nets, and Nationals, and it is a really a tough thing to figure out how to get your athletes up for a meet this early in the season, um, which you kind of have to do because it's a home meet. You have a home crowd, you have home supporters who are coming out to watch this and want to see Wisconsin do well. But as Mick was pointing out, I mean, his athletes are going to be in a heavy training block. And so it's always hard to know exactly how they're going to run at this point in the season. But at the same time, this is your meet. So you still got to get your athletes out there. You still got to get them lining up. So I thought that was a really interesting predicament, something I've never thought about. Um, but this meet is going to be super exciting. A lot of head-to-head -head competition. And hey, maybe if whether they have their, their full strength team on the line or not for this, it's going to give the athletes who do line up a ton of experience. And that's something which you're going to need for maybe that, that sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth runner um, as you start getting later in the season. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an interesting, uh, just like, I think your point's a good one that you brought up, Matt. I mean, just thinking about being a young athlete, it's at your home course. Even though coach says, hey, we're training through this, to go into that with like a level head, be focused and not get too wrapped up in everything that folks like us are talking about, knowing this is a, a, a big weekend, all of these teams are kind of coming in and converging onto your home territory. Uh, and just kind of keeping the eye on the prize down the road. Uh, it's really interesting to hear Mick talk about that. And um, just, I'd, I'd be curious to be a fly on the wall inside at those, at those team meetings and thinking about how, how do you actually do that, right? Um, but yeah, very interesting point, Matt. And um, real, again, big, big weekend ahead. And we're, we're now, we'll, we'll get into that now with the Nutty Comb Wisconsin Invitational, but that's not all that's going on. That might be the biggest thing going on but not all that's going on. So out in Wisconsin, we've talked about Nutty Comb. Uh, Oklahoma State will host their Cowboy Jamboree. Arkansas will have their Chili Pepper Invitational. And then in Arizona, uh, the Dave Murray Invitational, which you know I don't know that we've ever talked about it, but we do have a team called Northern, Ari Northern Arizona University uh, who has the number one ranked women's team and, and number four on the men's side going out there. Uh, so we won't see them out in Madison or in Stillwater this weekend, but we will see them competing. Um, I'm guessing, Matt, maybe not full squads out there, but uh, TBD, I don't know if you have any insider information on who we may or may not see out on the NAU squad. Yeah, I guess you, you only have to look at the NAU schedule to, to be able to guess whether or not they'll have a full <laughs> squad, because obviously, yeah, they're, they're gonna be racing the, the Dave Murray invite, and then the next week they're gonna be over at Notre Dame. And so 
I, I think this is a great opportunity for them to give some people racing experience and see, hey, maybe is this someone who's going to be a, an eighth, seventh, eighth man or woman on our team? Um, and also it's close to home. So it's, it's a nice, easy meet to travel to. Well, the big one, Ashley, I think it's time to get into it. Uh, Storylines at Nutty Comb Wisco Invitational. Um, you know, looking down at this, is 13 of the top ranked women in the country when it comes to the team competition. The men, there's 15 ranked teams in there. Uh, how are you? How are you going through this and looking at the top storylines that people should be thinking about this weekend? I mean, gosh, I think I'm excited because it's like the first time we're really going to see most of these heavy hitters all competing at the same the same meet, right? Like if you if you look at what happened last year, it's you know it's kind of similar situation, right? Like you, that's when you first see the big powerhouses competing. Last year, NAU swept the team titles. They won't be here this year, so we are going to see some new champions crowned. If you're looking at the top returning teams on both the men's and women's side, the Georgetown women, they finished third last year. They're going to be returning here in 2024. And then the BYU men will also be returning. They finished second last year. So we already have teams that had success just a year ago coming back looking to take a win here show their stuff and i think the you know i'm curious to see how it all shapes out and then based on this i think we're really going to see a lot of the movement in the rankings happen right you're going to see some upsets within our rankings right like there's going to be some movement because things don't always shape out exactly how we think they're going to be right and so i think this is where we're really going to see how these individuals uh you know race each other and how it shapes out in in the team rankings Matt, you've run out, out at uh, Wisconsin a few times. I, I think I, I heard you say this is one of your favorite courses out there. Um, just, again, all these teams coming in this weekend, what, do you, what are your expectations? What are you looking forward to seeing? Yeah, it, seeing this list of teams here, it's not surprising. I mean, this is the meet that you want to be at. This is the one where you get some really good experience against a lot of ranked teams, see where your team is is doing early. Um, I imagine this is really going to shift some of the rankings uh, because we're going to find out how, how these teams are actually doing, and, and hopefully we see some, some full-strength teams out there. Uh, but it's also interesting because some teams decide to to hold out their time running in Wisconsin for pre-nets. Um, so we 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 still have a little bit of disbursement over this weekend. But as you as you're saying, I mean, I I absolutely love this course. I remember when I first came to NAU, this was like the first time I felt like I was in a real cross country race over here. You have a ton of people on the start line. It really kind of feels like nationals a bit, especially that home the the starting straight is just a mass sprint into the first corner which bottlenecks uh, so you've got to really make sure you're in a good position there uh, but it's just it's just such a fun it's a fun meet it's a fun course to run on and i i hope they get a bit of rain i hope it's a little bit a little bit torn up this early season as well because just the, the more the more we can feel like this is a real cross-country race and this is cross-country weather is is better for everyone I, thinking back to last year, Graham Blanks wins it on the men's side, Parker Valby on the women's side. Harvard's not there this year. Um, so we're going to have two new individual champions this year. Uh, any, any thoughts on or excitement based on what you guys are looking forward to seeing, uh, names we should be thinking of with the teams that are out there this year? I mean, I think if you're looking at the teams competing, right, like I think that, you know, looking at that, someone that pops out to me, if she's racing is someone like Chloe Scrimgore of Georgetown, right? I think she's among those within our top five in her own rankings. And I think she proved herself last year, not only on the cross country course, but on the track as well. So I think she's going to be one to watch if she is racing indeed this season. I know Matt already talked about maybe we won't see teams racing their full squads, but if she's racing, I think she's one to watch. And then I think on the men's side too, you gotta be looking at someone on, you know, from BYU, like Casey Klinger, right? Like he's already won the Autumn Classic this year. He's gonna, he's someone that ran at the Olympic trials. You know, he's in tip top shape. He's one of the top guys in the NCAA. And I think he could definitely come in here again if he is racing and could take a win here. Chloe Scrimgore the, uh, of Georgetown, you mentioned Ashley, top returner from last year on the women's side, last year finished uh, seventh at this race and looking at the men's side I have to find a way to bring him up in every show uh, one of the top returners Parker Wolf seventh last year UNC is scheduled to be there this weekend also from Wake Forest Rocky Hansen who finished just 
in front of in front of Wolf last year in sixth place. So a little ACC rivalry there. Um, and again, we've talked about this the last couple of shows. We'll, we'll, I think we'll really start shaking out where Parker Wolf sits in this uh, individual ranking. I'm glad you mentioned those two names again. Parker Wolf, someone that I think should arguably be a favorite to win the NCAA championship. And then, you know, someone like Rocky Hansen, I'm glad you mentioned him too. Last year he was a true freshman and he raced up and, you know, through Nuttycomb, ran so well in Nuttycomb, and then he was injured for the entire rest of the cross country season. Didn't start competing again until the end, the tail end of track season. So I think having him come back here, racing at Nutty Comb, hopefully at full health, like I think I'm just really curious to see where he's at with his fitness, his endurance coming off of an injury, because I think we all know that when he is healthy, he could be one of the top guys in the country. Well, as we mentioned, not the only meet this weekend where things will start shaping out the, the cross country landscape. Uh, the Nutty Comb, will be also in conjunction this weekend with the Oklahoma State Cowboy Jamboree out in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where we will see two of the top-ranked teams on the women's side, and then on the men's side, four of the top-ranked teams. Also in this race, I do want to call out uh, one of our early season spotlights, Incarnate Word, out of San Antonio. Uh, they'll be at this meet with the University of Texas, and they've, they've communicated to us they want to be the best team in Texas. So a little sub-story within all of this. Um, and then also we're going to see St. Mary's out of Kansas, who's on the men's and women's side, one of the top-ranked teams preseason uh, in the NAIA going up against these D1 teams. So, uh, Ashley, what, do you, what are you noticing out here in Stillwater? I think the biggest question for me going into this has to be, will we even see Oklahoma State at full strength, right? Like I think we saw last year that, especially on the men's side, they held all their guys until basically conference regionals and then nationals, amazingly, sometimes in some cases it was even regionals and then nationals. So obviously it's one of their, their home meets, it's one of their premier home meets. I think we can see a lot of guys getting into the action, whether we'll see them at full strength I'm not sure, but again, you know, they, they, dominant, they, they dominated this meet last year, right? Like the, the men's and the women's both won, um, and I expect to see that probably happen again, but I think that's really just the biggest question mark for me going into this meet. Matt, the, uh, you know, thinking back to Mick's comments about the home meet, I mean, how, how do you feel like that plays for Dave Smith and his squad? Uh, this, is, this is really chance one of one to showcase their squad in a big way on campus. They're not going to have these multiple opportunities leading to NCAA. So similar, do you, see we, do you think we see more of a full squad or what's your, what's your take based on what you know of OK State? Yeah, I think it, it is a similar situation. When you're racing on a home course, you really, if you're in a position to be trying to win, you do want to be trying to win. And I think with the, the Oklahoma State men, I mean, they're in a position where they're going, they're going to be going into nationals in November wanting to win. And you want your home crowd, you want your supporters to be getting behind you and be excited about not only this meet this weekend, but the entire rest of the season. And so you, you kind of want to put on a showing for them. You want to show them that, hey, we've got a, we've got a strong team again and we're, we're ready for what's to come. And for for the men, I think they have the the benefit of being so strong right now that they really don't need to put a full strength team on the line to to take the win here. When I'm looking at the Oklahoma State women, I think they're going to have a a really strong competition in New Mexico. So maybe we will see more of a full strength team because because they're going to want to win this meet. So I, I don't know who's going to end up lining up. It's it's really hard to tell. But I'm I'm also excited for. Usually you don't get too excited for times run during cross country, but this this can be a fast course. So if they have some favorable weather, which at this time of year it can be, um, it's it's interesting as well to see how fast uh, people end up running. I mean, I also I need to correct myself. I you know I said they're not going to have the path like uh, you know Wisconsin does with these home meets, but really one thing it, that's interesting to call out about St Dave Smith and his squads, like this is their big meet of the season, right? They don't go to pre-nats. That's what they're known for every year is they kind of avoid these big uh, kind of powerhouse meets. And so this is kind of their big show. They actually had a, a early season home opener. The next meet on their calendar is I think October 19th, another home meet. And then they go to the Big 12 championship. So they, they are very known for kind of avoiding the big show uh, or the big spotlight. And, and really, you know, so what we see at Jamboree will be, be telling. Um, and so anyway, excited to see what, what, what's to come there. And really, we have to wait till 
essentially November to see them mix it up uh, with some of these other squads. Um, one of the other, other things out there I'm going to take note of this weekend, uh, Haptum Samuel, New Mexico. We'll see him out there, one of the top-ranked individuals, Ashley. Um, you know, I, I, how do you feel like he's, he stacks up against this, uh, this OK State squad? I mean, gosh, I think back to NCAAs last year, 2023, he and Graham Blanks were, were dueling it out, right, uh, up until the end, until Graham Blanks was able to pull away. And I think, you know, we saw Haptum Samuel win the NCAA 10K championship on the outdoor track. And so coming in, he's going to be one of the favorites. Granted, let's look back, too. I mean, he ran at the 10 on the track, two for 10K. He ran one of the fastest 10Ks ever in collegiate history there. So we know that his fitness is there. I'm curious to see where he's at at this point in September again, too. And I think it's also curious to see how, obviously, New Mexico on the men's side has that low stick in Samuel. But then how do the places behind them, you know, how do they fit in, right? Like, I think if you look at their roster, they go back pretty deep. I mean, they, they can go back one, two, three, four, and you have, you know, a pretty solid group of, of guys there for, for team scoring. Um, but I think this, you know, seeing Samuel and how he, you know, fits into that puzzle with everyone else will be interesting this weekend. Many things to, to shake out and a lot more to talk about after this weekend. Um, you know, I, I feel like we've been talking about just the, this moment coming really this end of September weekend and, uh, and, and what that will lead to. Uh, Matt, any, any, any parting thoughts before, uh, before we close out today's show and, uh, and, and things that you're looking forward to or, or really want to take note of as we, we, we get ready to meet next weekend to, to talk about all the sh that's shaken up in the rankings? Yeah, I think, as you just said, the, rank the rankings are going to be shaken up. This is, this is kind of the weekend where cross-country really starts, where we're finally starting to see more athletes racing, more teams racing, um, and, and this could start dictating who's going to be lining up later in the year. Uh, later in the season because coaches are going to be thinking how are people performing you might end up having a freshman who you just decide to put on the line and see what happens and they race great and now suddenly they're on the top seven you just you don't know but this is the point where we're going to start finding that out well matt thank you as always for joining us and for your analysis we're excited to see how things shake out this weekend and talk all about it next monday right here so until then uh ashley a lot to look forward to as we're, we're talking about. Wish you safe travels to Madison outside of cross country. Anything that you got on your schedule? I mean, for me, it's all XC now, right? We're getting into the thick of it. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. Again, first trip out to Madison ever for me. And I think we're all just really excited to see how things shake out in Eddycomb. I think, I think you got to get some cheese curds while you're out there, too. I think so. Yeah. Maybe like a, a cheese head, you know? Too? Cheese head, cheese yeah. curd, just a lot of as much cheese as you can get <laughs> uh, while you're out there in Madison. But we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to this week's episode of the Flow Track College Cross Country Rankings presented by Hoka. And we are excited to see you back here next Monday to talk about everything that's taking place over this coming weekend. So until then, we'll see you next time.